Well, hello, welcome to your restorative practice. We are going to utilize either a chair or the edge of a couch or wall space. And just as a reminder, wall space could mean closing a door and having that be your wall. Or if you do have wall space readily available, you can use that. Um, in the absence of those two things, like I mentioned before, a chair or a stool or the edge of a couch. Um, if it's a chair you're using, I prefer it not to have wheels on it because I want it to be something that you can press your feet and your legs into without it rolling away on you. Um, and then like, for example, I have this little stool here. I'm just gonna slide that stool up against the wall so that when it comes time to use that, if I'm going to use the chair, it's not gonna slide around on me either. So we'll start off by elevating our calves, um, the backs of the legs on this prop that you're gonna use. So that could be legs of the wall completely, or you can join me in just draping the backs of the legs over the edge of the chair or stool. Um, and then when we're coming to our backs, I always recommend taking a blanket underneath the back of the head especially if you're on the hard surface of a floor. This is, again, a practice you could do in bed. You could use your headboard as your wall. Um, so if you wanna do that, please feel free. I'm gonna actually take a pillow and take it on top of my chair so I get a little bit more elevation to the backs of my legs. So I'm scooching my sits bones as close as I can to that chair or wall, and then I'm swinging my legs up and over the chair or extending the legs up the wall. And then when you come down to your back, if you are using something underneath the back of the head, just kind of make sure it's only underneath the back of the head. It's not underneath the shoulders, right? So the spine is pretty neutral, pretty um, flat. I mean, the spine has a lot of natural curve in it, but relatively flat as, as the spine can get. We're just gonna take a few moments here to allow ourselves to arrive into our practice. Let the morning go. Close the eyes if that feels comfortable. Start to soften the body. Notice how you're holding your arms. Can you roll your shoulders underneath your back? Can you stretch your arms out a little bit wider? You could play with facing the palms up or facing the palms down. And you'll notice there's a slight rotation in the shoulder head as you do that. So do what feels best in the shoulder. We'll start to Become aware of the breath. We're still practicing that longer exhalation. So I like to use that ratio of an inhale for a count of four and a longer exhale for a count of six. So your own count of four, however long that takes you, your own exhale for six however long that takes you. We'll take uh, about a three minute hold here to allow everything to settle, to allow yourself to become present in this moment. 
It really does take time for the mind to settle into the body. And at first it might feel a little jarring. It might feel really challenging to just hold still in one position. That's very normal. You're not alone. We use the tool of the breath here to anchor us back to this moment. So if you can stay with that count, inhaling for four, exhaling for six. About one more minute here. Start to add a little bit of movement in the feet. So circling out through the ankles. And if your legs are up the wall and that's hard to do, you can point and flex the feet. Just adding movement. So whatever your current posi position is, you can keep it. We'll extend the right leg up. If the knees are bent and you're using a chair, extend that right leg up. Turn the right knee out to the side. Place that right ankle on top of the left thigh towards the knee joint. And so if you're at the wall and it's too challenging on the hip to do that, scoot away until you've got a 90 degree angle in your left leg and you can place the sole of the foot on the wall. So your hips would move away from the wall. In the chair, a lot easier to stay as you are. We're just taking figure four on our back. You can gently take your hands to your thighs right hand to inner right thigh, left hand to the top of the left thigh. Really gentle pressure, just kind of encouraging that right knee to open out to the side. And be here for about three minutes. So do what you need to do to adjust so that you can find stillness in this shape. Again, if you're too close to the wall, scoot away so that this becomes sustainable. Come back to that breath, that ratio, four count inhale. Six count, exhale. If you still have got your hands on your thighs and that's adding tension in the body, then release your arms. Just let the upper body completely relax.
Let's take one more breath here. Draw out that last exhale. And then release that right leg. You can either extend it up towards the ceiling, circle out the ankle, or relax it against your prop, point and flex. Just take a few breaths here to be neutral through the hips. Even though you know you're going to do the second side, we're trying to slow it down, give the nervous system a, a chance to settle. So we slow things way down, we pause in between sides. Inhale that left leg. If it's bent, straighten it out. Again, point and flex, circle through that left leg. We'll bend the left knee out to the left side, place that ankle on top of the right thigh towards the knee joint, creating that nice, easy figure four on your back, making any adjustments for this side that you need. And then gently just pressing the hands on to the thighs, that left hand to the inner left thigh, the right hand to the top of the right thigh, just a really subtle, gentle pressure. Encouraging the left hip to open without force or without going beyond, I'd say 30% of your maximum effort. So for those of us that are very flexible and bendy, this might not feel like a whole lot of sensation and that's okay because in a restorative practice, that's not the goal. The sensation is not the goal. The goal is the relaxation, the tapping of the parasympathetic response. Let's find a comfortable position to rest the arms, just let them be completely relaxed. No effort. That might mean stretching your arms out wide if you want. You could rest your hands on your rib cage if that feels good. Just find a comfortable position for the arms. Completely relax the upper body. And the only work here for you is to continue to Come back to your breath ratio, four count inhale, six count exhale. You might even experiment with adding a very slight pause at the top of that inhale and at the bottom of the exhale. And can you do so if you're adding that pause, can you do so without adding tension. It's just a subtle, very brief pause in the fullness, in the empty. Let's take one more breath. Let it all go. Let that left ankle release. You can extend the leg upward, circling out the ankle or point and flex, and then relax. Find that neutral position through the hips. Pause here. Our next shape is going to be a twist on our back. And if you have, if it's hard for you to rotate in your spine, like for example, if when we do knees off to the right, that left shoulder pops up off the ground, 
more support underneath the back of the head is what I would recommend. If there's a lot of space in between the knees, sliding a pillow in between the knee and the ankles will really provide that nice support and help actually the lumbar spine stay nice and long. So support yourself, prop yourself. Let's come off to a side. You can stay close to your prop if you like. I, I like to, when I'm twisting on my back, have a little feedback. So I think it's kind of nice to have sits bones in contact with a chair or with the wall because I can press down through my sits bones and feel this length through my spine. And you can have your knees bent. So if you want to scoot away from the wall to maintain the knees bent, or if you want to utilize the wall and stretch out through the legs, you can do that. And again, I'm demoing this from a place away from the wall because not all of us have that wall space at home. But if you do, feel free to use it. So reaching both arms wide, like a big capital T shape, experiment with planting the palms so that they're facing down. How does that feel in the shoulders? And now experiment with flipping the palms to face upward. How does that feel across the chest and in the shoulders? And choose the position that is most restful for your shoulder joint, for your collarbone, for your throat. Where can you soften and release? Now in a twist, the gaze, I always like to start with the gaze up towards the ceiling if I'm on my back, which we are. <laughs> and then if it feels okay in the spine and you wanna take it a little bit deeper, you can take your gaze away from the knees. So in this case, my knees are to the right, I'm looking over my left shoulder. That doesn't always work for everybody. Sometimes it causes too much tension in the neck. And since our work here is to soften, relax, and release, we do, we create that shape, that support in our bodies. And so choosing your position and your props from a place of wisdom, from a place of compassion for your body and its current experience. Settle back to the breath. Four count inhale, six count exhale. The thread of our practice that weaves it all together is the breath. Stay with that breath one more round. And then when you're ready, start to unwind. We're gonna come back to neutral position. So however you began your practice today, whether that was legs up the wall or legs over the back of the chair, whatever you're closest to, come to that neutral position, pause. 
of the hips, the shoulders, the knees, the ankles, everything facing in the same direction. Let any sensation wash over your body as you unwind your spine. We will set up for our second side. And we're gonna again, take the knees in the opposite direction. So if you were with me, uh, this time our knees will be moving to the left. And then each side might feel a little bit different. So you might need a different level of support. Be willing to give your the back of your head a little bit more propping if that right shoulder pops up off the floor. Sometimes that helps to elevate the head just slightly. Props are always welcome between knees and ankles. Effort here is to stack that right hip on top of left hip. A little bit of pressure of the tailbone into your prop, whether it's that chair or wall space, might help. And if your hips are against the wall, you can extend through the legs. Sometimes that feels quite nice. That requires a fair amount of flexibility in the spine. So if it's not there, don't force it. Definitely not required. Start to settle into that breath here. Settle into the stillness. If it's wise to do so, you can take your gaze over the right shoulder and just give yourself permission to unwind and Come back through center. If that doesn't feel good on the neck, if it causes tension in the jaw or anywhere else in the body, give yourself permission to let it go. Four count, inhale, six count, exhale. About four more breaths here on this side. When you're ready, start to unwind out of this shape. Take your time coming back to neutral. We're going to head straight into Shavasana. So that could look exactly like we began with your legs up the wall or draped over the edge of a chair. 
deeply restorative way to spend time. And since is this is restorative yoga, why not continue with it? If the feet feel tingly, um, if their legs are going numb, uh, that's very normal, especially if this is kind of a new thing for you. So feel free to just bend the knees into the chest if you need to, or even just stretch out on your back if you prefer a traditional Shavasana corpse pose. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Open your mouth, exhale the air out. As you do, feel your back body release, become heavy. Your next exhalation, feel your front body melt into your back body. And the whole body, it's as if it melts into the floor, whatever you're lying on. And the division between your body and whatever is holding you in space disappears. What would that be like? Let your back teeth part. Let your tongue widen at the base of your mouth. Let your whole jaw soften. Let your eyes sink heavy into their sockets. All the muscles of the face. Let it go, let it rest. Shavasana. If you have more time in your day, please feel free to stay as long as you can. If you need to move on, start to awaken the body, fingertips, toes. You can move your head side to side. Invitation to keep the eyes closed or a soft gaze. If you'd like, you have space above you, stretch the arms overhead, lengthen from fingertips to toes. And then bending the knees, roll off to a side fetal position. Take a full breath here on your side. When you're ready, press into your hands. Rise up to a brief upright seat. Feel free to sit on one of your props or your chair if you were using one. Uh, invite you to take one hand flat against the heart and the other hand stack that on top. Roll your shoulders down your back. Breathe in, feel the crown of your head grow tall. Breathing out, bow the chin into the chest. It's reverence.